the, the topic that I want to talk about is a, a rerounding of thermoplastic uh, pipe. And most of you probably not familiar with the thing because you don't find anything in the literature rerounding of the pipe, uh, particularly for transportation that we're dealing with. And uh, what's happening is, is that some of the state like Ohio, that they require that if you have a above 7 or 7.5% deflection, you have to remove the pipe. And so in that case, the alternative will be to go, if it's possible, to uh, rerounding it. So, the, so what we did is, is that we have a two-stage research. First, we did a small project to see what's going on and to understand what's happening. And then after that, now we are doing more a comprehensive study uh, that hopefully that uh, Kevin White will get his, the previous speaker, uh, write his dissertation on that one uh, once that research is completed. And so, so it, what I'm saying is also it's part of his work too. And so what's happening is, is that uh, what is rerounding? So what they do is that there's a couple of company came with these equipment that they basically, to make it, say it very simple, but then as when I explain it, you could see what's happening, is, is that you're sending a machine inside of the pipe and vibrating, and as, at the same time, you're pushing the pipe outward. And in that case, you reduce the deflection. But now they done this on solid wall. But keep in mind that most of the work that we do is a profile. And so it's a lot different than a, a solid wall that when you're pushing it out, because now we're dealing with a corrugation that is pushing against the material. And also you have a valleys and a crown and all those kinds of things. So it's very complicated. And so in that case, what you want to do is to uh, see what's happening in the uh, initial case that you was looking at to see. I think this thing is stuck. Yeah. OK. Uh, so, uh, so basically, this is uh, some of the thing I will talk is that uh, we physically, I mean, that's not exactly the machine that they use, but you could see that uh, uh, you have a, a system that vibrates and is pushing the pipe outward. And then they pray that it, hopefully that it will stay that way forever. And so in that case, we want to find out that if that's happened or not. There is a typical one again. This is a sort of a, a, a picture. So there's only two companies performing this one, and they're competing against each other, and they have a, a different technology. So at least uh, so far, we use one of them, and hopefully with near future, we'll use the other one. In that case, we'll see how much difference is the way that they are operating these machines, because they are completely different concept. So when you do that, what's happening is that some of the variable that you will have, one of the type of variable backfill material, because a lot of time, when you have a problem on excessive deflection, is a good chance that you use the contractor use bad material. It also compaction, but if you could use a good material like we do in Ohio, compaction is important, but it will not be really a huge factor. The quality of the backfill is really important. And so if we assume for the crushed stone and they use a clay, you know you have a problem. And so in that case, the type of backfill material is very key for us. The density, because again, uh, a thermoplastic pipe, almost like a 60 to 70% of the capacity comes from the backfill, because the pipe doesn't have that much structure capacity. So all the capacity comes from a backfill. So in that case, the density is very important. Uh, pipe stiffness, it's OK. That's the thing. Initial shape, that's the other thing is that you want to see what kind of shape the pipe is. And then the initial deflection. That is important because of, and when I explain these equipment, is that deflection is in the crown, excessive the deflection, or it's in the spring, the side, or somewhere. Where is that? That is make a big difference with these equipment that they're using that, uh, to solve the problem. Because some of the equipment I could uh, say that, based on uh, ob observation that I did, it's a good chance that when you go rerounding, you make the matter worse than better. So it is a chance that you have, have to have experience what's going on there and how you want to correct it. The height of cover is important 
because again, when you're vibrating, you're vibrating the whole system, the soil. And in that case, you will, the soil start moving around. But also, one of the things is that the contractor or other, or the devotees, they don't want that, it, if it's possible, to rerounding will work and they don't have to remove uh, the pipe because the payment in the surface uh, of the uh, layer is a payment. But if you have a very shallow cover, it's a good chance when you start vibrating, you will be damaging that surface uh, thing anyway, the payment. So you have to replace the payment anyway. So in that case, then it's a, uh, you have to look at the cost. Maybe it's better to just go ahead and remove a little backfill and replace the pipe because you are uh, reconstructing the uh, payment on the top of the pipe also. Uh, so in that case, you could see why the cover is important. Then the moisture and water, you cannot always we have to deal with that. That's something that particularly when you don't have a granular material, uh, then you moisture and water table those because uh, you do the vibration, you know what will happen to water when you vibrate it. So our uh, thing was to monitor backfill stiffness condition prior and after rerounding. Now the question comes how you want to do that? Because you rerounding it, before you round, you want to get at what kind of soil is or what condition stiffness you have. And then after, uh, once they're rerounding it, what happened? So that's one of the uh, things that we will do that. Uh, obviously, measuring the shape, we could do that. Examining con condition of a corrugation, that was difficult for an existing project, but I think we solved that problem, uh, how to do that for the, uh, this new project that we are doing. We, we solved that problem also. I'll explain how we do that. And so uh, these are some of the work approach we took. So, I don't want to go too detail on that because Jeff will say I took too much time. And so this is, we have to go deliverable. Anytime you write a proposal, you have to put a deliverable. And so this is a typical uh, pictures that you can get. This is uh, one of the, this is not a project that we were involved, but this is a sort of a, uh, uh, people that they promote these equipment. Uh, they have some in their file and some early research. We did, we are not part of it, but I just had some picture and I want to show it to you guys. So the one of the pipe that we had to look at, it was very difficult to find the pipes that we could go there and look at, but one of them is it was a Jefferson uh, 150 in Jefferson County, and it was a 36 inch HDP pipe uh, that, uh, that was initial diameter, and it installed under the uh, Jefferson, in Jefferson County under uh, State Route 150, a pipe was severely deflected in several locations and even a place it was torn, it was cut. And the deflection was so much that even ODOT would not allow rerounding for that pipe. But uh, the contractor went there and did it. And so what we did is initially that we went there and measured uh, the different location of the pipe. You could see that the places that I was interested to look at the uh, vertical shape, or uh, which is give you the deflection, the horizontal, and a diagonal. These are the ones that I uh, did a, a measurement. Obviously, we have a student to go. I'm not going inside of the pipe, so the students are the ones that uh, go do that kind of stuff. So <laughs> we have some skinny one. And <laughs> so you could see the picture from inside of the, uh, when we took the picture. And you could look at that. Uh, you could see that deflections and all those things, how bad the shape the pipe was. So what I did about the stiffness, what I did is that I have 30,000 ton uh, or 30 ton cone, uh, that uh, CPT they call it. And so what I did is I pushed that cone in two end of the pipe and the center of the pipe. But I was very careful to not push the cone through the pipe. So we did a very precise surveying that we knew where is the crown of the pipe is. In that case, when I push the cone, it will uh, stop it where only a few inches from the top of the pipe. In that case, I don't damage the pipe further. And so, so what this cone gave you is that that gave you a tip resistance, which is sort of, uh, you can get the stiffness. It gave you the friction and it give you uh, poor water pressure. 
Now with this cone is also capability that you could do the environmental stuff, you could see different chemical. But in this one, focus was only to measure those parameters. And so there's empirical relation exist that from those information, you can classify the soil. So in that case, I will know what's going on, the, uh, that, what kind of soil is. Which it, when I pushed it the first time, I knew that it wasn't meeting all that spec. It wasn't any close to it even. And so the, basically what the contractor did is that they took the dirt from the side of the road, put it in the top of the pipe, and they said, this is it. We are okay, but that wasn't uh, according to that spec. So you could see that uh, when we're running the cone, that's the type of data I get. And then in the right side of the thing, you could see that sort of a classification of the uh, soil. So this is the westbound before rerounding. Look at that right side, because that's the one that uh, gives you some idea what kind of soil classification you have based on those color. And then look at the after rerounding. Completely the whole thing has changed. Because of what that vibration will do is to take materials and move it around. And it's a good chance that what it takes a material from the crown zone, move it to the spring zone. So it go, material moves. And also, when you vibrate it, if you, anybody that used to vibration, they could see it. You could see that the, when you have a particular uh, uh, moisture there, which it looked like it was there, is that the um, particle moves around. And you get that segregating the material, basically, with a vibration. So you could see the big difference between the two, before and after. So that's the way I could see what's going on on the before. Uh, rerounding and after on the backfill. What this information gave me eventually is to see what will happen in the long term because now I know what kind of materials are around the pipe, what kind of stiffness are there, and then what will happen uh, down the road a few years from now. Here is another uh, a hole because I had the three holes. Uh, these are uh, a little expensive experiment because when you're bringing these heavy trucks and equipment and all you, exp uh, the technician and everybody to run these equipment for you, uh, although we own it, but still it's just uh, a lot of work. You can see after. And, and uh, most of the changes are always close to the pipe. And there is another one, the, other, uh, the third hole. Here's after. You can see every time has changed. So then what happened, then once uh, they uh, rerounded, uh, which is surprisingly, uh, they did a very good job. And the pipe hold the shape uh, very good. And so we don't know how long that will last. But it, and, and that specific case, the pipe did very well, uh, or the rerounding did very well. And uh, then what we did is that uh, in the next stage we went there, then I sent my uh, laser that in that case I could get the whole shape of the uh, pipe. So in that case, that laser is goes, uh, that thing, tripod like a thing, it goes inside of the pipe and continuously raises, rotating it and taking the, sh uh, measuring the deflection and the whole shape of the pipe so I could just plot the whole shape. And this is uh, the sh uh, shape we got this after rerounding. You get a little blimp there because what's happening is that when you have a moisture at the surface of the pipe, which is sometimes you will have it, the thing, and when the laser goes, the reflection, it causes a little problem. You get this little bump, but that uh, pipe is not behaving like that. That's just more electronic, a noise. And now you could see that uh, the measurement, uh, we did it in uh, uh, 36 inches. The nominal vertical deflection was 35.55, and uh, the horizontal, 36.9. And you could see the whole thing is how the rerounding has changed. And I think I have a table here, too. Yeah, the table will show you a lot better here 
uh, before and after. And you could see that the uh, vertical, that the flexion is, the diameter is increased because you're pushing it outward. And then that the horizontal kicks out. Or, or kick, I suppose it comes in. So you could see that the, uh, the numbers are now, according to Oda's spec, 1.25 for those percentage. Those are good numbers. But how long that will last, we don't know that. So then what we did is that we said, we, uh, what the best way will be that we will, uh, on the second phase of the project, I don't have too many pictures because of the, when the project is in the progress, then ODA doesn't like that we go too much talk about it. So we have to go through uh, permission and all those kind of stuff. I could talk about it, but on the, the slide, I cannot make it, but I can. I remember it, so I'm not that old that I that hasn't lost my memory yet. But uh, so what happening is is that uh, this is the uh, operation, and so what I decide to do on this one, that uh, which is some of you that working in the pipe will be very interested. Actually, the information we're getting from this one it will not help alone in rerounding, but it will also help on the understanding of all corrugated pipes. That what we do. One other thing I did is, is that uh, I want to find out that when you put a backfill material, how much material goes inside of the corrugation? Particularly when you use a crushed stone, when you compact it, crushed stone goes down. It doesn't go laterally. Sand does, but crushed stone doesn't. But we always like crushed stone. So in that case, you, it's a good chance you have a void between, uh, on the inside of the corrugation and the outside of the pipe. So what I did is, is that I told to my technician to design a system that I will make a small hole in the pipe and have a plate that when the uh, construction is complete to push that uh, plate and see how much force is needed for deflection to get a stiffness. And then remove that system, leave the plate, then go there and uh, re-round it, then connect back, and then measure again the, uh, that stiffness. That will give us an idea how much movement of material get in, these vibration can cause to penetrate inside of the corrugation. Because one of the things I was thinking, this machine maybe will help us on something else. I have a deep barrier that we have a 40 feet cover. But if I have this machine, I will not be surprised I could put in that place, in place of a thermoplastic pipe, in place of 40 feet cover, I'll put 100 feet cover and still I will not get more than a 5% deflection. Because this system will densify the material around the pipe so much that when you add more backfill material, pipe will never see that. In that case, maybe that's one technique that actually this machine will, could be used for something else, is that we could use it for a very high uh, cover uh, if you want to use a thermoplastic pipe. So, so that's one of the things we measure. The other thing we're measuring is that we have a pressure cells around the pipe. So in that case, we could uh, monitor the pressure, how it develops. Then also on the crown, at different elevation, I have accelerometer to measure the uh, vibration uh, to see what's happening, the, the, the acceleration, those things at different depth. So in that case, I could take all these information and sort of make a recommendation to what will happen. And this is one of the pipe that we did. Uh, and you could see that the equipment goes there. Uh, there, that in this one picture, you could see that, uh, you could see that I have a skinny student, some of the more skinny, you look at that first one, uh, is that, uh, I could put that one in 12 inches, actually, but this is 36 inches. Uh, and so you could see that system inside of it is basically a laser that has measured the shape. And then uh, the guy that is running the system, he doesn't want to uh, take a picture of his equipment, but still I sneak a picture that you could see that is coming out in this thing. And what happened is that I put it in a crash stone, which is ODOT recommend, recommend uh, around the pipe. And I had that deflection of 13, we assumed that we are a dumb contractor, we bury pipe and force it 13 inches of deflection, 13% deflection. And as a result, with this machine, 
they couldn't even go to reduce it by even to 12 person. The reason is because we put a crash stone on it. There is no machine in the earth could go do anything to the pipe, which does that mean that you can have a pipe even if a 13 person deflection and it's crash stone, it will be there for 100 years. Not, not, there's no place to go. So, so in that case, that's a progress we do. And now what's happening is you can see that equipment that it goes inside. And so these are the conclusion from previous work. But what's happening is, is that what we do is now is that uh, I told the guy that we cannot do any more with a crash stone. There is no hope for rerounding and a crash stone. So now we are using uh, sand, which is the another end of the backfill. And then after that, you will use uh, 57, which is, these guys know the uh, gradation. So these are the, that's a progress that, we, uh, and I think hopefully within uh, next, Eight, nine months, we will complete the project, and we'll see if this uh, rerounding is viable technique for uh, fixing these pipes or, or just wasting our time. So we have to find out what's happening. So I think, Jeff, are you okay? So anybody has anybody any Anybody have questions? You need the mic? Not everybody needs it. Some people can talk loud, but... Questions? Quick question, very interesting. Um, but how about different types of soils or embedment around the pipe? So it may not get the same thing, same results. The soil that, uh, around the pipe? Around the pipe. The, the, around the pipe, we decided that you will have a three uh, type of soil, and sort of, uh, none of the other doesn't allow it exactly. But we have a sand, 57, which is sort of a Lord Stone, but it doesn't have as much point, and then T04, which is a lot of my fear. Uh, in Ohio, every place we now use T04, it's a for road, a for I fill up the pipe, everything is T04. Yeah, it's essentially, for, if you're look, thinking of Ashto, it's going to be a sand, a gravel, or a sand gravel mix. All right, I'll, I think we're out of time for questions, so we'll move on to the next presenter.